Hi everyone and welcome to the Happy Heart. I'm so glad you guys came back today to check out my pork chop recipe. This was a request from a grocery haul I did a few months ago and in the grocery haul I just said hey I bought pork chops for my pork chop recipe and somebody said hey what's that? So I said I will do a video no problem. So if you if I say stuff on my channel and um, you guys want to know what it is or what I'm making just ask me and I will of course do a video. So this is a pork chop recipe that I got from um, a friend of mine's mom and I got it probably nine years ago maybe almost ten years ago and I've been making them for my family ever since. The lady who gave it to me she I was just cooking with her in her kitchen and she showed it all to me. I have no idea where it came from. I would venture to guess that she just made it up because that's the type of like cook she was and she was an amazing southern cook. She was so good. Kind of taught me a bunch of stuff about cooking. This was one of her original recipes and it's something that has become a family favorite in my house. They are basically breaded fried pork chops. Um, you can use the bigger pork chops or the thinner ones, um, whatever your family prefers. My son's eight years old and he loves this recipe, asks for it all the time, and my husband loves this recipe as well. So I hope it's a hit in your family. It is super easy to make, so I know you guys are going to love it. For this recipe, you're of course going to need pork chops. These are just boneless, small pork chops, like they're not very big, you can see. I love buying pork chops because they're usually cheaper. This whole pack was about $4. The breading is about three cups of flour. I'm gonna show you guys the way she told me to do it. Um, she puts everything in a Ziploc bag and breads it like that. Uh, I, you can also put it in a bowl and bread it uh, that way as well. That is most of the time how I do it. I don't know why. The flour mixture, we're gonna put Lowry seasoning, salt, parsley, and salt and pepper. Then on over here, I have two eggs, and that's gonna be our dip mixture. We're gonna um, crack these open, scramble them up, and we're gonna put the egg, the flour mixture, and right into our hot pan. All right, let's make the breading mixture first. This is about three cups of flour, and I just kinda use as much flour as as many pork chops as I'm making. When you buy the thinner pork chops, which this works amazing with that, and that's what I actually usually buy, um, I use the same amount of flour. So usually this about this lasts for um, the batch that I'm making, but adjust per your family. This is about three to four cups of flour. The key to making this flour mixture is to look at the flour. So we're gonna shake all of our ingredients in and look at the flour and see what it looks like. So we're just gonna shake a bunch of the seasoned salt in. I would say a good two tablespoons. Parsley, you want green leafed parsley of the dry kind. And we're gonna do the same with that. We are just gonna shake it in. When I say look at the flour to see how much seasoning you need, is that you want to be able to look at the flour and you want to really be able to see it. So you want to look at the flour and see that there's parsley in there, see that there's um, the uh, red kind of seasoned salt in there, and you can see the pepper. This, I would think we would put a little more seasoned salt and probably more parsley. All right, so a good rule of thumb when putting these spices in your flour is that you just wanna see them. So basically you just wanna be able to look at the flour and see that there's um, different spices in it. I would say you want a tablespoon of seasoned salt, a tablespoon of parsley per every cup of flour. I did about three tablespoons of the Lowry seasoning salt, and I did all the parsley I had, which I'm assuming is about three tablespoons as well, and I shook in a bunch of salt and pepper. Um, not as much salt, but at least a good, probably two tablespoons of pepper. And then all you're gonna do is just mix it around in your bag. Right, guys, this is what my flour mixture looks like. So you can really see all the seasonings in there. 
Okay guys, so now we're going to bread our pork chops and I'll show you how to do that. It's really simple, really easy. And then we're going to get them into a deep skillet that I have one on my stove right now. Right now I have about two tablespoons of butter in there melting. And that's what you want to do is we're going to actually cook them in butter. So this recipe is not healthy. I'm just saying, terribly unhealthy for you. Um, but really yummy in your belly. So, um, for that splurge or when you just want to have an easy night and do something great and pair this with a lot of vegetables or a lot of other nutritious items, you know, a little butter is not going to kill us. A whole lot, that's one, that's a whole nother, a whole nother video. I have scrambled two eggs right here, as you can see. I have my pork chops and I have my flour mixture. You can also get another bowl and put your flour mixture in that and just kind of, whoops, and just kind of dip it in as you do it as well. Using the Ziploc bag, it gets um, less mess everywhere. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna grab one of your pork chops and these are boneless pork chops that I use with, to do this recipe. I'm gonna put it right in the egg mixture, which we all love doing, I'm sure. And then we're gonna put it right into our Ziploc bag. The best thing, see how it's just sitting in there? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda mush around we're gonna kind of mush it all around and get everything breaded. So basically, just give it a shake. And we'll pull it out and you will have a nice breaded pork chop, as you can tell. I put them, I put them just off to the side till I get ready to fry them in my pan. All right guys, this is the other method. I usually put my flour in a bowl kind of mix up the seasoning just with a spoon and then I bread my pork chops this way. So I just kind of dip it in, I throw some stuff on top and I do it like this. It is less messy to do the Ziploc bag method but I feel like I can kind of push the breading on a little bit better this way and I don't know why, I just I think it's all preference. If you are looking for a double breading effect, you can definitely do that with this recipe. And all you would do is you would put your pork chop back in your egg mixture again. Make sure you get a really good coating on there and back into your flour mixture. And that will give you even a thicker uh, breading as well. And all I do is I kind of pat it on there. When I'm done, I put it off to the side to cook up. So you can tell the difference between double breaded and single breading. Right, now that we have our pork chops, we're gonna put them in our butter. We're on medium to high heat. If your butter starts browning, turn your heat down to medium. That's what I have mine on right now. And the flour will really, the, will really soak up the butter. So it'll start kind of changing as it goes. All right, so like I said, we're frying in butter. As you can see, um, the butter kind of turns a foamy color usually. And like I said, it's not ter terribly healthy but it's really good, and for a once in a while, yummy meat dish, this is really the way to go. You guys see that? We wanna kinda get them crisp and really golden brown, so we're gonna leave it for a little bit. All right, guys, we're gonna check our breading, and you really just want it to be golden, kinda like this, and we're gonna flip it. Even though it looks like the flour has burned off on the one side, or um, it'll still make a crispy breading, so don't worry about that. We're gonna just turn them over. And we're gonna make sure that our 
butter is still getting underneath them, so I usually tilt my pan a little bit to do that. That's more because you don't want it to stick than anything else. All right, guys, it's a little loud in my kitchen, but I thought I would come back and show you. Um, we are, it doesn't take as long when you flip them over to the other side. Uh, right now, this is what we have going on, and that's really good. If they're starting to get a little more dumb than you would like or looking kind of black, um, you can flip them again and keep flipping them until they're done. You probably are going to cook them for about three to four minutes each side, and you really just want them to be golden, and you want them to cook through in the middle. So that's kind of the key you're going for. This is what mine look like at the end result. Okay guys, so this is our masterpiece. I'm actually serving it with some rice and some green beans, and as you can see, our um, fried pork chop is nice and golden. All right guys, so you can see that the breading usually stays on really well, and that it's cooked all the way through. I usually just kind of watch it, make sure it's golden brown. Um, at least about three minutes each side and I put butter in the pan if it starts sticking I will put more butter in the pan um, but I would say just start off with about a tablespoon and keep adding from there because you don't want an exorbitant amount or anything. Alright guys that was super good so I took too big of a bite it was actually kind of embarrassing my husband is over there laughing at me but that's okay it's really good and I hope you guys try it and like it. If you have any questions, um, hit me up in the comments below and we can discuss anything. And if there's anything else that you guys have seen me talk about that you want me to do a video on, just let me know. Thanks for coming over today and hanging out with me and I'm going to go eat some more of this and I will see you guys again. Don't forget to subscribe.